Next, we're talking about firebox positioning. As you know, one of the major benefits to a hasty bake is you have an adjustable firebox that can go from 18 inches below your grate all the way up to about two inches below your meat. It makes the grill extremely versatile, and it's one of the best features of having a hasty bake. What that allows us to do is cook in many different positions depending on the protein that we're using. The first thing we're talking about is a sear. A sear is very basic. It's getting the fire as close to your meat as possible with direct heat to try to impact and form a really nice crust uh, or bark on the meat that you're using. So for the sear, you move your indicator knob all the way up to the sear position. You make sure that there's no heat shield on top of your firebox. And depending on the amount of protein that's on your grill, you can spread your coals out to try to maximize the amount of air that's coming into your uh, grill. Now, you also, in preparation for a sear, you want to leave your lid open for a couple minutes to ingest as much oxygen as possible. And you may even want to crack your vents wide open just to get that grill as hot as you can get. Once that's done, you put your position in the sear, and you put your protein on top of the fire, and it goes to work doing its thing. A hasty bait becomes a true indirect cooker when you start employing the use of the heat shield. The heat shield, which is included in every adjustable model of a hasty bake, is a wonderful tool to make sure that you can get true offset indirect cooking inside your model. The heat shield goes directly on top of the firebox and allows you to cook traditional smoked barbecue without the impact of having direct heat hit the bottom of your meat. To do that, you drop your firebox into the smoke position at the very bottom making sure that you have enough oxygen between the ash pan and the firebox for air to be able to get in and keep your fire burning. And then you insert the heat shield on top to completely cover your coals. This allows the heat and the smoke to exit the side of the heat shield and come up and begin circulation in your firebox. Now we'll talk a little bit more about smoking later, but I want to make sure we realize that as the heat is exiting the side of your heat shield, it is coming in direct contact with whatever is on the opposite side of your firebox. So if you're smoking something, you want to make sure you position it over the top of your heat shield because if it's to the left of the heat shield, you're directly injecting heat right onto the bottom of your meat. The next thing I want to talk about is hot smoking. So the idea of hot smoking is that you're smoking at a higher temperature than you would if you were cooking in the 250 to 270 range, but you're still getting the benefits of having a separation between your fire and the meat. In order to hot smoke, we still keep the firebox in the smoke position, but we go ahead and we remove the heat shield allowing full use of that 18 inches from the bottom of the firebox to the bottom of your grate. This is great for roasting chickens and pork loins where you want to build a little bit better bark or crust on the outside, but you don't want to cook so low that sometimes that skin turns a little bit gummy or it tends to dry out on leaner proteins. The last firebox position we're talking about is the bake position. It's extremely versatile, although it confuses some people about how best to use it. The bake position turns your hasty bake truly into a charcoal fired oven, which is wonderful to bake things in the 300 to 400 degree range and get the full benefits of what you would use on an inside range on your hasty bake. The most versatile position for bake is by putting your firebox uh, shield back on top of your firebox. This allows a nice even surface for that heat to rise. You can even build your fire in the middle of the firebox if you'd like and put the heat shield on it to allow the heat to come up both sides. But what this allows is you can still roast chickens and everything else you can do in that 350-ish range, but you're getting the benefits of having some kind of diffusion rather than having heat directly impact the meat that's right above it. You can also use this to cook things like brownies and cookies and breads, uh, things that need to be in that baking range that may benefit from the flavor of charcoal and hardwood that you would traditionally do inside. Now we can do them outside on the grill and get a whole new level of flavor.